Hey, this is Michael from Mark Smarter, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through my Launchpad Explorer free Revit productivity add-in, and I'm going to show you some of the highlights from the add-in. And again, this is a, an add-in that I built using my Launchpad platform. So I'm here in Revit 2025, and I'm going to go up to the Arc Smarter ribbon here, and you can see here are the Launchpad Explorer tools. There's a collection of 13 tools. Now, I'm not going to walk through all of them, but I'm just going to hit some of the highlights here. Now, one of the tools that I really like is this batch rename tool. Now, if you've ever had to rename views or rename rooms, this is a great tool for you. In it, you can enter your find phrase. So for example, if I want to change the word level to floor, I could do that very easily. So I'm going to type in find. I want to find any instance of level. I want to replace it with floor. And then I can choose the scope that I want to change. So in this case, I want to change view names right here. And I have the option to match case uh, as well as match whole words only. So I make my selections, I click OK. Uh, in this case, since I'm renaming views, it's asking me if I want to rename the levels. I'm going to go ahead and hit no. And it tells me that I changed four view names. And I can see here in the project browser that it changed my floor plan and ceiling plans uh, to floor instead of level. So nice and easy, works great, uh, and can save you a whole lot of time. Now, another tool I'm going to highlight here is Power Convert and Quick Convert. So let me start with Quick Convert. And I'm going to switch into, oh, let me hit cancel. I'm going to switch into a drafting view. And these two tools are uh, based around converting elements in a linked or imported DWG file into Revit elements. So if you've ever had to bring some data and line work in for details, or if you have CAD files that you want to use to generate room lines or area lines, this is a great option for you. So with Quick Convert, I'm going to go ahead and select that. It's going to prompt me to choose the linked DWG or the imported DWG, whatever it is. I click on it. And from here, I can choose the Revit line type that I want to convert all of those DWG elements to. So I have detail lines, model lines, area boundaries, and then room and space separation lines. So I'm going to choose detail lines. And then I can pick the line style I want to convert them into. So I click this down. This is going to read all of the line styles that are available to me in this current model. I'm just going to set that to be thin lines. And then I go ahead and click OK. So the tool is going to go through. It's going to read all of that DWG geometry and then just convert it and recreate it as a detail line. So if I select my uh, import here, I hit delete, I can see the resulting line work. Now one thing to note is it's not going to bring through any dimensions or text from the DWG. It's just going to bring through the line work. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Now the power convert takes this a step further. So I go ahead and select the element. And instead of converting everything in the DWG file, now I can pick and choose which elements I want to convert, as well as the line style I want to convert them to. So if we go ahead and pick detail lines again, I can see all of the layers in that imported DWG. And let's say for our center lines, I want to change those to be the center line style. And then we'll take the continuous two, I want to make that thin. And we'll go to continuous three, We'll set that as wide. Any of the layers that I leave blank don't get converted. So I can be more sort of discerning in what I want to convert. All right, so I've made my selections. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it's telling me here's the, the results. If I go in here and then delete that, I can see these are the uh, different lines, the resulting detail lines that got created. So if you have to do any sort of conversion, this can be a real time saver. All right, our next tool I'm going to highlight is Make Sheets. And this is a great tool when you have to create a whole bunch of sheets. Using the interface, I can go through and I can just enter my sheet number and I can give it a sheet name. And I can add additional rows here as I want to or as I need to. Two, three, four. We're going to make another sheet, three, four, five. And then I can just put my sheet name here. Now I can also go through and I can select views that I want to add to those particular sheets. Now what's nice about the Make Sheets tool is in addition to just typing out all the information for the sheets here, I can also import this 
from a CSV file. Now, a CSV file is a comma delimited file. I can create it in Excel. Uh, I can create it in a text note. Essentially, all of my rows in the spreadsheet are just separated by a comma. So I have a sheet list here. In fact, if I go ahead and open that, let me open that in Excel. And you can take a look at it. It's very straightforward. Um, I can also open it in Notepad, but there's not all that much to it. There's a column specifically for my sheet numbers, a column for my sheet name, and then I have a column here for views. So I'm going to go ahead and create a 30 sheets, and then I have some uh, views added in here as well. But that's really about it. It's a lot faster to do this here in Excel uh, than it is to do it manually in Revit. So I'm going to select that. Actually, let me make sure I close this file first, otherwise I'll get an error. So I'm not going to save that. I'm going to select that file. It's going to replace the existing data, which is fine. And now here is all of that CSV data. I can see it here and here. I can make some changes if I need to. And then when I'm ready to go, I hit OK. And Revit tells me it successfully created 30 sheets. So I can see those sheets here in the project browser, and I can see that it added uh, some of those views as I had selected them. All right, our next tool that we're going to look at is the Align Views tool. And this is a great tool when you're setting up your sheets and you want your sheets to uh, look a certain way. So in this case, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to take this, this particular view here on my sheet A105. And if I look at some of the other sheets, I can see it, it placed the views you know, maybe not exactly where I want. Now using Align Views, I click on that. I choose the views I want to align to. So I want to say Sheet 105, that south view. And then I can choose the views to align. I'm going to select all of the other views. I select those views and then I choose my alignment point. So I want them to align to that 105 south view on the top left. And then I have the option here as well to pin the views after I align them. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you can see it moved the view to correspond to that location that, based on the view that I selected. So if I go through all of these views, they've all been aligned to that same point. Now this tool uses the, the view crop region uh, the viewport size really to determine how to make that alignment. So if you're aligning plans, you want to make sure that the crop region for all of your plans are identical. Otherwise, you might they might be slightly uh, misaligned. So just something to keep in mind. All right, now the last tool we're going to take a look at in this demo is the renumber sheets view. So if I go to renumber elements, I can choose renumber sheets. And this tool is great when you need to renumber a sequence of sheets inside you know, another sequence or inside a large sheet list. So we have sheets here that go from A101 all the way up to A130. Let's say I want to take those sheets that are from A110 to uh, A130, and I want to rename them instead to be A, let's go from uh, 150, and then we're going to increment them by one. So anything that starts at 110, we're going to start that at 150, and then we're going to increment the sheets up from there. So I can go ahead and click OK. It's going to renumber all of those sheets in the sequence. So we stopped at 109 and then we started back up at 150. And I also have options in there to increment by 5s, by 10, so a lot of different options. Now, in addition to the 13 tools here, uh, there's also an extensive help section. So if I click on help, I can go through and I can see all of the Launchpad docs. So this will show you exactly what each tool does, a little description about how it works. I also have here feedback. So if you have a comment about a particular tool or if you have, uh, in, if you have an error, you find an error, uh, or you have a suggestion for a new tool, you can go ahead and click on feedback and enter your information in this form. I get all of this feedback here and I will respond to you uh, as soon as I can. So feel free to use the feedback here to, again, contact me about errors, suggestions, comments, whatever you want. All right, so that's it about uh, our quick demo of the Launchpad Explorer. If you want to download it, again, it is a free download. You can go here to this page, arcsmarter.com slash launchpad underscore explorer, and then just scroll down, click on the download now button. This will take you to the sign up page, enter your email address, 
click the button and you're ready to go. You'll uh, come to a download page. You can download the zip file, unzip the MSI file, and then go ahead and get started. All right. So that's all for me. Hope to talk to you soon. Bye.